Hey guys, hope everyone out there is doing well. Uh, let me first wish everyone a belated Happy New Year. Uh, I thought about give, doing, a, uh, doing a video for everyone in January, but I wasn't really sure what uh, I wanted to say, if anything, so I didn't bother. But uh, what I wanted to talk about today, well, first, just a quick update. My uh, wife and son are doing well. Uh, we're doing okay here in El Paso. And um, we're actually coming up on, very soon, uh, another month or so, we're going to be coming up on my uh, son's fourth birthday and our, our uh, 10th wedding anniversary. So really good, good stuff happening. But anyway, uh, this is a channel, of course, about the Philippines, and I wanted to say a few things about uh, some news that's coming up. As many of you know, probably that follow the other channels, from what I understand, uh, this month the Philippines is going to be, as they say, open for tourism again. And uh, I'm not trying to be negative here. I think that's a good thing. I mean, the, the, the way they had it before, if I understand it correctly, I haven't followed this super closely, is you go to the Philippines and then you, you'd have to spend... I don't know, five days, seven days, whatever, in some type of quarantine as soon as you arrive. And obviously, that is a huge deterrent for a potential tourist or visitor, or whatever you want to call it, because, you know, who wants to spend part of their precious vacation time and all that extra money to spend time in a hotel? Nobody does. Uh, I, I know of people who've done it. One of my friends, uh, saw so a friend of mine who she and her husband went there not too long ago and they endured that and you know no problem so the biggest change as of right now of course is that if I understand this correctly if you are vaccinated and can show a negative test then you, you know you don't have to go through the quarantine so let me first just tell you where I am philosophically on some of these things. And probably if you're far left or far right, then something I'm about to say will probably make you angry depending on uh, depending on where you are politically, philosophically, whatever. Uh, my wife and I have been vaccinated. I just for, uh, you know, again, some of you are going to think, well, yeah, that guy's going to fall over and die sometime soon because he got the vaccination. If you believe that, that's fine. I, I came to the conclusion that the risk of the vaccination was significantly lower than the risk of infection. And so my wife and I both have been fully vaccinated. Uh, I have not received a booster vaccine. I just don't see uh, the, the need for that at this point. If they make one for Omicron, maybe, but uh, at this point, I don't see the need for a booster vaccine for my age. Um, at the same time, I think lockdowns are just completely awful, and and I hope someday in the future we will realize that the the lockdowns were one of those cases where the the cure is a lot worse than the disease. So that's kind of where I am philosophically on these things. Okay, so. Let's talk about the Philippines opening up again. The Philippines is not requiring the quarantine anymore, which is a good thing. Uh, I think that's a positive step. I don't want to sound to be I don't want to sound critical of of that step that they're taking, and I, I hope it's the I hope it's the beginning of of even less restrictions. But I, I would caution you against thinking, well, this means everything is back to normal. And, and I would caution you about a few things. First of all, uh, if I understand the new policy correctly, in addition to a vaccine card, you do have to show a negative COVID test, uh, a recent negative COVID test, like within 48 hours or something. And to me, I, I consider that a hassle. And I will just tell you that I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical about the accuracy. Well, not a little bit. I'm skeptical about the accuracy of some of these quick tests that are being used. Uh, the reason I'm skeptical about it is, I, from, from my understanding, way back before we ever thought about COVID, when they, they did some research, research has been done, 
where people's noses have been swabbed, you know, just the general population, and you find all kind of stuff, viruses, whatever, in people that are not necessarily sick. And so I'm not saying that testing the COVID tests have no purpose whatsoever, but I'm very skeptical about them. So with that in mind, what if you test positive for COVID, but you are not sick and you're not going to get sick? Now, the problem is that positive test is really going to mess with your plans to travel. So keep that in mind. You have to show a, a negative COVID test. Uh, secondly, I, I am thinking about the, the issues that you might face from step one. And, and again, please, folks, understand I'm a man who loves the Philippines. I, I love my wife, who is from the Philippines. I love my family in the Philippines. I spent a lot of time there. Uh, culturally, I still have a lot of the Philippines in me because I spent 11 years there. So please don't interpret this as me being uh, trying to just look up, look up, think of things to complain about. But, okay, so let's just say, okay, you're, you're vaccinated. You get the negative COVID tests, fine and good. Uh, I wonder how smooth this is, how smooth the process is in the Manila Airport or the Clark Airport, wherever you arrive, because uh, I think of the countless times I've went back and forth from the U.S. to Manila, and there's typically a long line that you wait to go through immigration. Uh, and that line, in my experience, the line moved pretty quickly because uh, at the time, pre-COVID, the Philippines was not particularly what I would call strict about who entered the country. So, for example, the last time we went, this was 2016, there's a, a playlist from our last visit there. My wife and I stood in line for a while, and eventually once we got there, it did not take a whole lot of, it wasn't a whole lot of hassle for, she used her, her uh, Philippine passport, they stamped me with the Balik Bayan privilege, and on we went. And even before, when I was uh, still single and would go through, that was a pretty fast process. A long line, but they would move through it quickly because, um, you know, because, again, weren't extremely picky as long as you had a passport and had a few things in order. It didn't take too long. And so I wonder what that airport line would be like now. Now that they're going to be checking everybody's uh, vaccine card. Now that everybody's supposed to be showing them a negative COVID test. So, uh, again, just caution. Don't assume that it's just going to be just like it was before, just because the Philippines is now opening up again. So, very first step, the airport line. That I can see where that may be uh, an inefficient process. Maybe. Now, those of you who have traveled recently, you can leave it in the comments and let me know. Maybe, maybe it wasn't an issue. So, airport line, first issue. But uh, it would not stop there. Okay. So, once you get into the Philippines, you're probably going to be required to wear a mask much of the time. That may not bother you. It may bother you. Uh, I don't know. For me personally, the only time that I've worn a mask over the past few months at least has been when I have been required to because we were flying uh, in an airplane and in an airport. Otherwise, uh, I'm kind of done with masks. We are. We're not wearing them anymore. And so I can see where that, that may be an issue for you if you don't like masks, especially Philippines tends to be a warmer climate through most of the year. I can see where that would be really uh, uncomfortable. Uh, and also, again, once you get into the Philippines, there's going to be, uh, there may be issues in terms of transportation, just in terms of the practical things you need to do to get from point A to point B because this virus has just been so disruptive to society in general, uh, even here in the West. I know that you have to show your vaccine card at a lot of places to get in now, the Philippines. And this, this is from conversations with my in-laws, with my family over there. So again, think about how you 
Typically, I'm thinking about how things used to be. There was a little bit of a line going into the mall, for example. Guards are checking you and everything. Well, I can see how that process would take longer if the guards are having to check everybody's vaccine cards. So uh, just, just some stuff I wanted to share with you, some of my thoughts about the Philippines reopening again. It's, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, my, my hope is that this is the first step and that they'll rapidly move to uh, fewer restrictions after they try this out. That's my hope because, you know, one thing, you heard me say that I don't like lockdowns. One thing that bothers me is how do people who were already struggling before COVID, uh, jeepney drivers, pedicab drivers, tricycle drivers, uh, common people, you know, the, the common guy or girl in the Philippines, uh, to me, the lockdown is a lot more dangerous for them than COVID is. I, I was talking to my mother-in-law the other night, and I said, boy, you know, it's, if, you're, if you're starving to death, then yeah, you won't die from COVID, but, you'll, but, you, you're, but this lockdown is doing more damage to you than COVID ever would. So I, I am hoping that that the the lightening of this restriction, this this whole thing about uh, this whole thing about the what's the word I'm looking for the quarantine. Yeah, I'm hoping that the removal of the quarantine is the beginning of more rapid steps for society in the Philippines and everywhere else really to uh, get back to normal. But until then, just keep what I've said in mind if you're thinking about going to visit. Uh, honestly, let, let's just assume right now that, that I had a limit, that, that I had money for a plane ticket and the vacation time and all that stuff. And let's just assume my son was vaccinated. He's not because he's not old enough. But let's just assume we had all those requirements to go. I'm not sure that I would go right now until... Uh, more restrictions are lifted until society, they, until the, the Philippine government decides, hey, let's just get back to normal and learn to live with this thing. Okay, so um, just thought I would share that with you. If you have other thoughts or whatever, uh, you're welcome to leave those in the comments. But uh, I am, you know, I, I'm hoping with this new variant, it's mild and seems to be able to produce a lot of what's called herd immunity with relatively few uh, medical issues associated with it. I'm hoping this new variant by the summer will bring things a lot more back to normal. But I I've thought this thing before. I thought last year things were going to get back to normal. So um, we'll see. But anyway, keep these things in mind. The, the Philippines being open... Uh, if if you really need to go and you are willing to endure a little more hardship than usual, then I would say go for it. The Philippines could, could really use all the tourism they can get right now, I believe. But just keep in mind that the, 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 the loosening of some of the restrictions do not mean that everything's back to normal. That's the point I was trying to make. Hope you guys have a great day.